Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. One of them is a rational number, 65 over 24, and the other one is a very irrational number. The reason why I call that a very irrational number is because there are two categories, basically main categories for irrationals. One group is called algebraic, the other is called transcendentals. And E is the group of transcendental numbers, which is like pi. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and see how we can compare these two numbers. Obviously, since one of the numbers is irrational, we're not going to be able to use powers to compare these numbers, but we have to use a different approach. And that approach needs to be a little bit outside the box. So be before we get to comparing these numbers, let's go ahead and take a look at e to the power x as a function in general. So e to the power x, as you know, is the exponential function where x is a real number. You can just raise e to the power that, and there's a nice graph which is increasing. It has a y-intercept, no x-intercept as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches zero, so on and so forth. You can say a lot of different things. And of course, e is a special number. It also comes up in uh, compound interest and so many other areas. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to write e to the power x as an infinite polynomial. In other words, an infinite series. And to be able to do that, first of all, we're going to assume that it can be written as such. So we're going to set it equal to a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared plus a sub 3x cubed so on and so forth. This is going to go on forever. And let's just call this f of x uh, for simplicity's sake. Because what I'd like to do next is to differentiate this function, get rid of some of the coefficients. As you know, the derivative, hopefully you do. The derivative of a constant is 0 because it doesn't change, right? It's rate of change. So we're going to get a bunch of equations. And then by solving them simultaneously, we're going to be able to get the a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2, all these coefficients. And there's going to be a pattern. So I'm going to give you that pattern uh, after showing you a little bit of how this can be done. First of all, before you get into any derivatives, notice that you can replace x with 0 everywhere. If you do that, you're going to get the following. e to the power 0 equals everything will be 0 except for a sub 0, which is kind of funny, right? And then on the right hand side, we're going to get f of 0. So e to the power 0 is 1, so that means f of 0 is 1. At the same time, it means that a sub 0 is 1. So we already found the first coefficient. Nice, right? Without differentiating anything. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this function once. Let's differentiate it once. And of course, if you differentiate e to the x, you always get e to the x. That's what's nice about it. Its rate of change is the value at that point, basically, which is kind of interesting, right? So as the y values increase, the rate of change increases. Interesting. So, but if you differentiate this infinite polynomial, even though it's infinite, you can still differentiate term by term and get a kind of like a pattern. The derivative of a sub 0 is 0. a sub 1x is just going to be a sub 1. And then from here, you're going to get 2a sub 2x. And then you're going to get 3a sub 3x squared, so on and so forth. This is the first derivative, and then take the second derivative. It's still a to the x, but a sub 1 disappears. You end up with 2a sub 2 plus 2 times 3, which is 3 times 2, or whatever. You want to write it as 3 times 2. But at the end, we actually want to write it as 3 times 2 times 1, which is 3 factorial. And 2 can be written as 2 times 1, which is 2 factorial. The factorials play an important role while writing this as an infinite series. And then you're going to start plugging in values like what is f prime at 0? It's 1 because e to the power 0 is 1. But on the right hand side, it gives us a sub 1. And then f double prime at 0 is 1 again, but this is 2 a sub 2. And from here you get a sub 2 equals 1 over 2. But like I said earlier, we can write this as 2 factorial. And a sub 1 is just going to be 1. We also know that a sub 0 is 1, so we kind of start getting these terms. So it kind of turns out to be the following. e to the x equals a sub 0, which is 1, and then a sub 1, which is 1 again, but a sub 1 is multiplied by x. Notice that 
it's 1x, which is x, and then you get x squared divided by 2 factorial, and then if you continue this process, you're going to get something like this. Make sense? So in general, we can express this as, uh, you know, using the sigma notation, we could probably write something like n, uh, so we could write something like x to the power n, divided by n factorial, and again, depends on how you want to set up your n. If you start, if you use x to the power n, then you're going to start the n at 0, because x to the power 0 is 1, and 0 factorial is 1, so that gives you the first term. And x, n equals 1 gives you x, so on and so forth. Makes sense? And of course, it's going to be all the way to infinity. So you can write it in a more compact form, uh, which is also nice, because you can differentiate this in that form, which is also possible. Make sense? And by the way, infinite series, these kinds of series are also very important for solving differential equations. If you can write, uh, you, you can use a power series to solve a differential equation. Well, most of them, or maybe some of them. Anyways, so we got this expression for e to the power x, nice. And now we're going to use it, how? We are trying to compare e to a rational number. So we got an... Uh, we got this expression. Uh oh, I already had it here. Anyways, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't even remember that I had it. But anyways, this is e to the power x. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace x with one. If you do that, that's going to give you e to the power one, which is e, and that's going to be equal to one plus one plus one over two factorial plus one over three factorial plus one over four factorial plus so on and so forth. It's going to go on forever. So we were able to write e as a sum of fractions, but infinitely many, right? Because E is irrational, but these numbers are all rational. If you add infinitely many rational numbers, you may get an irrational number, which is kind of interesting, right? Okay, now, what do you, where do you go from here? Well, we're trying to compare E to what? 65 over 24. So does that ring a bell? 65 over 24 has a 24 in the denominator, and that should give you a clue, because 4 factorial is 24. Awesome. And now, you can go ahead and break this down, actually, if you want. So this, is, this kind of goes back to, I think, Egyptian fractions. How do you write a number as a sum of unit fractions? Unit fraction means a fraction whose numerator is 1. That's exactly what we're trying to do here. But there is an easier way. You can also go backwards with this, but I'd, I'd like to go forward. So you can go ahead and do this. Go ahead and take a look at some of these terms and see if you can evaluate E uh, to a certain point. I say to a certain point because it's not going to be exactly E, but it's going to give you a good approximation. Let's go ahead and do it. So by using the first five terms, E becomes 1 plus 1, which is 2, plus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 6, which is 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 24. And obviously you could continue, but I want to stop because I got a 24 at the bottom and the common denominator is going to be 24 at least. Why? Because the least common multiple of all these numbers has to be greater than or equal to the largest denominator, right? A little bit of number theory here. So now we're going to make a common denominator, put a 1 here and then multiply by 24, multiply by 12, and multiply by 4. Hopefully you're familiar with this type of notation, uh, because what, what I mean by that is multiply the top and the bottom, which I'm going to do in a little bit, and uh, that's what it means, to get 24. And 2 times 24 is 48, and then 12 times 1 is 12, 4 times 1, this is what I'm multiplying basically, right? And 4 times 1 is 4, and of course this is just 1 over 24. Oh, by the way, E is not equal to that. Of course, there's more to it. So we'll just we'll just put a dot, 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 okay? I mean, if you want to continue 1 over 5 factorial, one of, you can, but there's no need. Now, let's see what happens. Pretend to be surprised. Okay, this becomes 65. And you're like, uh-oh. That is interesting, right? That's interesting. Okay, so we got that E is 65 over 24 plus infinitely many other terms. But one thing I want you to notice is that all these terms are positive. Why? Because there's a plus sign between them and they're all factorials or reciprocals of factorials. They're all positive. So this means that E is greater than 65 over 24 because it's 65 over 24 plus a bunch of, I mean, infinitely many positive terms. So it has to be greater than 
65 or 24. Were we trying to compare these two numbers? Yes. So this is the winner. And yes, Euler is always the winner. So Euler's number wins. Yay. Great. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.